Hey everybody, this is the Ladies Room Podcast. It's your girl Ashley, and I'm here with my lovely and handsome co-host. Everybody, you all want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Jovo. Welcome back. I see y'all out there. Hey, it's Cannon back again this week. Looking forward to some nice conversation. What's up, everybody? My name is Rashad. Uh, first time on the show. Thank you, ladies, for inviting me to this great show. And my name is Darwin. First time um, as a guest on the show. I call in all the time. I've been enjoying every minute of it. And I'm just grateful that they allowed me to be on the show today. Yes, thank you guys for joining. Sisters, y'all know I love to see y'all. And I'm very happy to see Darwin, faithful um, watcher and viewer of the show. And Rashad, thank you, Rashad, for joining us. Okay, so we're going to dive right in. That's what we do. We don't want to waste no time. Okay, so we're going to dive right in with our first question. Okay, um, the first question is, is the Black man here set? Is the black man a sphere effective? Hmm. And when I say effective, um, I mean effective at building um, black male and female relationships. Now, they may have some other goals, but I'm specifically talking about that. As I have heard many of these um, black man experiments say that that is the aim or the ultimate goal of their community. Okay, so that's my question. Is the black man a sphere effective. For those of you who do not know what the Black Manosphere is, it's a segment of Black men who um, have various commentary on social media. Some of them have books, um, or at least I know one. I don't know if there are a lot of books, but um, some of them, they make different commentary uh, about the Black community, and their focus is largely Black women. And I know that I've, I've heard a lot of them say that their their goal is to give black men a voice, you know, give black men a voice um, and where they in a community where they have they feel they've been silenced. And so now they are talking about a lot of different um, issues. And a lot of those issues tend to be um, related to black women. And so I just want to show just a little bit, uh, uh, give a little bit of background. Um, so oh, we got Chicago Rilla in the group. All right, now. Hey, Chicago. Hey, Ken Folk. So, <laughs> alongside, so this is a clip from um, a website that featured Negro O'Shea Jackson, um, who's a, a pretty big name in the manosphere, and his comments about the Black manosphere. It says, alongside his podcast, Jackson created the website Negro Manosphere. And he says um, that outlining the motivation being the creation of the site, he says, it's about damn time. Black men in the Western world have a voice. We, have, we deserve to have our own preferences, our own thoughts, our own media, and our own voices. Contributors to the site hail from around the world. Okay, um, and he says he focuses on self improvement, physical activity. Um, however, much of his content centers around Black women um, being single moms, pointing them as the reasons for single motherhood, promiscuity, and the raising of weak Black men. Okay, um, here is a clip of a recently released book, um, audio book called Black. Well, I'm sorry, it's a book available on Kindle called Black Man is Here. And now this um, book said, focuses on high incarceration rates, chronic homelessness, chronic joblessness, et cetera, of Black men in our community. Okay. Now, like I said, the focus of Black. Um, the Black manosphere, at least on, on social media, has been very different from that. Usually they focus on why Black women are single, why Black women are not submissive, um, single motherhood, many, many different things. Um, you have them talking about how to avoid certain types of, of women. So the Black manosphere is a collection of thoughts, okay? And I, would you guys agree that it centers a lot on on black women. 
Well, I, I think so. But so basically, we're going to stop there. I want to hear from you guys. <clears throat> Do you all think the Black Manosphere is effective um, at building the relationships between Black men and Black women? And are they fruitful? What do you all think? You want to go ahead? Let's let the fellas start first. Darren, would you like to start first? All right. Um, I'll start first. So um, their goal, right, uh, they want to create a voice for Black men. I think they've done that. They, they achieved that goal. Um, we, heard, we heard everything they say loud and clear. Um, are they effective in creating relationships with Black women and men, family and culture? I don't think so. Um, I think mainly because they're missing uh, accountability and the lack of understanding for women. I don't even think they're trying to understand women, right? So um, I don't think it's very effective. And if they're and if they're if they're if we're um, misconveying their message, I think they need to take another approach because what it seems like they're just shifting blame on women for everything, and that's no way to um, cultivate a relationship, right? So you need accountability and understanding from both parties. And I don't think they even try to understand where women are coming from on any subject or any topic. Okay. Well, what do you say to the ones who would say, well, we've heard enough of women? I'm sorry. What would what you, you say? What would you say? What would you say to men who say, well, we've heard enough of women? <laughs> uh, I I don't I don't speak politically correct ever, so I'm not gonna start now. But um, I, I would think they probably need to um, shift their shift their interest towards another group of people. Then, if they're if they don't um, care to hear what women think, um, that means they're not even trying to create a rela a, a, a open and a positive relationship with them, right? So why even bother? I'm not about to entertain anybody that's not trying to understand me. So if they're not even trying to understand women, then I think I think they're not interested in women. That's just my personal opinion. And um, I don't want to use negative terms or anything of, of what I want to call them. But I, to me, it kind of sounds like they're on the fence. You know, like a lot of women that, that have a lot of problems with men, they sometimes start dating women, right? Because they don't want to deal with men. They, they say, I'm tired of listening to men, so I'm start dating women. So... I think a lot of the ministry, that's how they're sounding right now. I don't want to deal with women. Well, if you don't want to deal with women, who do you want to deal with? Right? So that's just my, the way I look at it. Mike? Now they can mute it. Sorry about that. Um, Rashad, what do you think? What do you think? The Black man is fear effective specifically at building relationships between Black men and women. Yeah. Uh, so I agree with half of what Darwin said. Um, as far as the Black men is fear's goal of giving Black men a voice to, to speak about our qualms, our issues, and the relationship spectrum, particularly uh, with Black women, you know, Black relationships. And it's been a great place and you know i would say probably the first time in my life uh where we're seeing kind of more black men speaking up talking about issues in the black relationship community um has it been effective cultivating relationships black relationships i would say no not yet however i would say if anything when i when i listen to it i think it's important for almost women to listen to it and then take what us men are saying what what our qualms are issues and things and then for women specifically black women because we're talking about black relationships uh to hear our problems because i feel like yeah pretty much it's pop culture and it kind of always has been i don't know how old you all are but you know um i'm 33 so you know pretty much since the you know from my conscious memory early 90s on you know it's kind of been like you know black men kind of like the bottom of the thing and we really haven't had a voice and so this is the first time we've had that voice and um you know black men are often times looked down upon and you know it's i think it's showing you know a lot of black men do have the right intentions in regards to love relationships we want you know the same things as any other man we want you know married family all that good stuff um 
but because we've been, I don't even know if silence is the right word, but you know, just um, I, I guess our voices haven't been heard for so long and now we're hearing we want regular normal things and just as any other race of men want. Um, but I would say from my perspective, the, a huge difference, and this is just a man speaking from his perspective, our women are are different than a lot of the other women, at least from my expect perspective, as I observe. So I think it's important to for women to really hear and like understand where the black man is coming from and then, you know, do whatever they want with that information. But if their goal, too, is to create black relationships, it's important to understand what men value, black men value, what black men want as well, because I do feel like my whole life I have heard and understand what women, black women want as well. Hmm. Well, I do have some pushback on that, but I do. I want to hear and just some questions sure. uh, for you. But I do want to hear what the ladies have to say. So, Jovo, go ahead. Oh, you're muted. Sorry about that. I think that initially the purpose was was for it to be effective. I think it was a sounding board. I think it was a place where men could come, share their issues, share their barriers. And then I think with some of the other, just like some of the other movements that we've seen, it began to become problem centered. And the problem centered part comes with, if this is the manosphere, why is it centered around problems demonstrated by black women. Um, when I was reading up on some of the material and I think some of the earliest stuff that I found was like 2012, 2013, it was meant for, you know, to see this kind of report card of how black men are either portrayed in society, um, how they behave in relationships, all different parts of their life. And, and what can we do to make this better? And now it's turned almost turned into Okay, we've identified one problem. The black woman is one problem. And it's like we're stuck. It's like it's stuck. It's, it's not shifting the gear to the accountability piece that needs to happen. So I think initially it was effective, but now I think it's just becoming a little bit problem centered. Okay. Um, I, I, I see some misogyny going on within the manosphere. Um, I, I don't think I'm the only black woman that sees that. I just think that it lost its effectiveness. It, it lost it, you know, it lost its mission statement. The, the, the whole purpose. I think it just lost it and it became problem centered around, okay, the sisters are messing us up. That's what I've seen. Now, I might be wrong, but that, that's kind of the impression that I'm getting. You know, and I understand that, you know, men, women, we're foundational pieces for our community, but I don't think that it's as effective as it could be. I think it's it's it needs to shift into the next level instead of being problem centered around what black women are not doing. If it's the manosphere, let's talk about what the men need to do. So that's my take on it. Okay, thank you. And last but certainly not least, Canna Hill. <sighs> thank you. It, um, it's right. it's so much to say. Go ahead. <laughs> I just think that it's very important when we are giving so much energy, credence, and faith um, in different movements and things like that, that we are actually aware of where they started, what they are, and we're also um, not thinking that we are reinventing the wheel and doing something <laughs> that has not been done before or that it cannot be uh, identified in other places. What I mean by that, there is a white manosphere, there is a black manosphere, there's an Asian manosphere, there's a Hispanic manosphere, there's a manosphere for every race <laughs> and background of man um, that exists. Um, I've seen a lot of the content from those different places um, a lot of the conversations center around many of the same things. So I think that it's interesting that there's a new narrative that's being spun in the quote unquote black manosphere that um, 
our women are uniquely this or uniquely that. And if that were the case, then you wouldn't have men of other cultures and races complaining about the same exact things. Um, the, the entire manosphere, a lot of it was born out of a reaction to feminism, first wave fem feminism. Um, it was a reaction created by white men um, a lot of it started with like the men's rights movements, um, fathers' rights movements. Um, then you have um, a lot of different groups that are involved in it. You have like the MGTOW, which are men going their own way, which are men who don't really uh, value relationships with women. Instead, they're like, you know, the pump and dump <laughs> or whatever. They're like, whatever, I'll just sleep with women, but I'm not interested in having long term meaningful relationships with them. You also have the. Um, in sales, which are involuntary celibates, you know, men who have had a difficult time in being able to get women uh, at all. And that the name kind of speaks for itself. You have that group. Um, you also have the pickup artist, which is also uh, loosely, all these are loosely tied, you know, um, strains within these groups. And like I said, they transcend culture and race. Like you can um, look in China, for instance, I literally just watched a documentary the other day about like the Chinese manosphere, right? And them complaining about, you know, uh, women are too liberal now. Women are, you know, worried about their careers and like all the same stuff. You know what I mean? So uh, I think that it never started <laughs> or had an intention. I think this idea that it's like created to build relationships between men and women that's never been an aim of any of those groups. Like how is men's rights, father's rights, MGTOW, incels, um, all those different things. Like how are they uh, groups that are created to build meaningful relationships between any, like between women, that, that's not what it's for, right? I think that with the advent or the, the uh, invention of like social media, you have your YouTube spaces and different things like that. Um, it has kind of morphed into a thing where it does spend a lot of time um, throwing red meat to those groups, right? Showing them things that is going to upset them, that's going to get that engagement, that's going to make that money. And at the end of the day, I just think we like to rewrite history too much. I don't know a time in history where Black women have ever been respected as a whole or exalted or treated this way or pedestalized. Like, I don't know. I've always known uh, a, a, a world where black women are blamed for all the ills in society, like for crime, for everything. That's always happened. So this is not anything new. This is just a continuation of what has always happened. Um, so I think it's effective in doing what it's created to do and doing what it's intended to do. But I think that it's important that while um, I think people do have very valid concerns, they have valid um experiences, right? Because my experience is not going to be the same as my husband's experience or as Rashad's experience, because I don't experience the world as a man, right? So I can't invalidate other people's experiences. But it's we have to be careful that we don't take those experiences and create narratives that aren't reality. It's kind of similar to um, how you have some white people, for instance. I always like to use this as an example, because I feel like more Black people as a whole can kind of understand this. It's like when you take white people, are there white people who are victims of a system, right? Which um, they can have a hard time, they can struggle, they could have a hard time finding a job, you know, all these policies and things could be put in place to keep them from getting ahead. But instead of them understanding where it's actually coming from, they create a narrative that says, oh, it's these other people that's doing it to me. Like, you know, it's this other group. If only I could get this group to, you know, get out of my way or whatever, then I would be better instead of looking at what the actual cause <laughs> of their problems are. And I think that that's part of what's happening, where it's like they have some valid concerns, but their anger is misplaced. I'll put it that way. Okay. So, fellas, what do you all have to say about that? Um, I just got a little pushback for um. What do you have about, to say? Go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. About women not listening, and I like they built a platform for mainly for women to listen to understand. I think they've been listening, and understanding throughout time, right? 
And um, just as, as long as I've been living, I've been seeing women shift and adjust their attitudes, the way they live, the way they treat, the, the way they treat, the way they treat and cater men over the time, right? If a, if a group of men say they want this type of woman, I've seen women just adjust. Um, I've seen from my mother, my auntie, my cousins, they, women naturally cater to men, right? And they've been on point over time. And, and I'm so glad that social media is a big part of uh, what we can see on an everyday basis from, from what people like, right? Because when men started complaining about women that cooked enough, boom, here come the women with all these posts about what they made for dinner, what they made for lunch, right? And uh, when, when when men said, oh, I, I don't like these these women with, with wigs and, and, and straight hair and they, they fake hair. Oh, boom, here come, the, here come the women posting natural pictures, right? So women been listening. I think you you all, the man of spirit, I think y'all say a lot of stuff that y'all really don't really mean. I think y'all say a lot of stuff just to say it because it sounds good at the time, and and because it 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 um it validates a a, a a point that you're trying to make. But in a in a whole, it really doesn't get to the point, and it really doesn't fix anything, right? Because I everything you all say is 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 really not true, you know. And, and I I'm a man, and and I pay close attention to women, and um. I've I've seen I've seen the change I've seen the shift, you know. So um, that's one thing that I, I, I don't agree with. Yeah. And um, and as far as men, men are leaders, right? So if you can't get a woman to um, get on your page or, or, or on your agenda, I don't think that's that should be a shot at the woman. I think that that shows um, a lack of leadership on the men because. I'm a man, like I said, I have never had a problem with my wife getting on, on board with what I wanted to do with whatever it is about financial situations, living arrangements, whatever it is. I've never had that problem. And not just my wife. In previous relationships, I've never had that problem. And I think it's because I'm open to listening to women and really catering to women as well as they just as well as they cater to me, right? It's a it's an equal, it's an equal exchange. And I don't think men really value that. I don't think men look at women as equals, so they're not gonna cater to them equally you know they never have okay Rashad what do you think um well I would just say and again you, you said it perfectly like you know our, our experiences are different and and Darwin uh, expressing your experience it is different from from mine and the things I see the conversations I have in a quote-unquote the manosphere um or just really I, I don't really even use those terms ever really i just talk about like my focus and goal is always like mending black love black relationships and things like that um and so and i'm specifically interested in black specifically african-american issues and i would say the number one issue within our community that is under our control mostly is our relationships marriages family children all those things so again i'm a big proponent of that um i, I can't remember who said it earlier but um one person said that um the, it's too focused on blaming women, blaming black women, talking about the issues. Um, and I do agree like that a lot of that is talked about. But what I see a lot is the black women not really taking accountability of the issues so we can move to the step of talking about solutions. Like we can't move to solutions if the the issues aren't being accepted that's what i feel like i've been seeing a lot whether it's in a lot of like personal life or just on you know social media with people i know personally people i you know just know talking online and stuff like that i feel like i see more black women I'm, and i'm just we're just talking about black women now of course as black men we have things that we're accountable for as well but just speaking on black women i see more of not taking accountability for the issues and then at the end of the day we can talk about our own personal experiences and what we see but I'm very facts based. I'm very statistics based. At the end of the day, we can talk about, you know, other races, other cultures, manospheres and the issues with, you know, their racist relationships. But it, at least in America, as far as African-American relationships, we like rank at the bottom of everything. Marriages, single parent rate, like we rank highest with that, things like that. So like this is a reality of what has been happening pretty much since, you know, the late 60s has not been working. Um, and really like, you know, things like single parent households and stuff, child, children born, you know, out of wedlock, that problem has increased, increased more and more over the decades. 
um, it's nothing that's really improved. So again, it's like we can say, yeah, women are listening, men are listening, all these kind of things, things are getting better, but the statistics show that it's not really getting better. Well, Rashad, I agree with parts of what you said. I think that um, things don't seem to be getting better. Um, I agree with that. I think part of the reason it's not getting the better is because Black men and women keep doing this. We keep pointing the finger at each other. So a part of being accountable is also, you know, realizing your role in something. I would never sit here and say Black women have not played a role in where we are today. You know, I respect what Darren was saying about black men are the leaders. So I think things start with you guys. They really do. OK, um, but we have a role in what has happened so far. We do with our choices, with who we have sex with, who we make babies with, how we treat each other, how we treat ourselves, how we treat the men that we're with. We definitely have a role in what has happened in our society. I think the problem with the black manosphere is that you all do not talk enough about your role. And I find that to be very off putting um, and ineffective because you guys, as you say, are supposed to be the leaders. Leaders don't blame. Leaders don't misplace, you know, all their anger or they don't misplace um, accountability. And, and I hear black men say this often. Black women don't take accountability. But I'm, I have yet to see in large numbers, black men take accountability. Everything is because of someone else's um, decisions. You know, black women don't submit. What does that mean? If you're the leader, why not say, oh, I'm not leading well. I, I don't understand where the disconnection is. Um, I, I, as the teacher in my classroom, I'm the authority. I cannot sit day in and day out complaining about what the kids don't do. I have to decide, oh, what am I doing that's keeping the people that are supposed to be following me from actually following me? And I'm not saying that you can yes. do that all at home, but there's no accountability. You all talk about submission, but submission first starts with, to me, I'm a Christian, so I believe that submission um, in the biblical sense first starts with you and your relationship with God. No Christian woman should be submitting to a man, you know, that is not first submitted to God. That conversation never happens. And when you bring it up, because I have, and in the group that we were a part of, I brought it up and I got a lot of backlash, a lot of pushback. The men were saying, oh, you're just looking for another reason to not submit. And that's not true. There are black women who want to submit. There are black women who want to follow, but we're not following just anybody. And White girls ain't doing it. Hispanic girls aren't doing it. Nobody's doing it. Nobody is going to say, oh, I'm going to submit to you when you haven't made good choices in your life, when you don't have a certain level of sexual discretion. Any wise woman knows that she should not have a man that has no sexual discretion. And we can talk about that later. You can't say that you're ready to submit when you're emotional or when you don't have emotional intelligence. You know, and a lot of people think emotional intelligence means you're emotional. No, emotional intelligence is, you know, I can identify my emotions and I can channel them the way I need to. It's I can relate to people. You know, I can, you know, from what I see from the man's fear is it's all I want the control. I'm the dictator and you need to just cooperate with me because I make the money. And there are so many things wrong with that because the truth of the matter is that you guys aren't the only ones that make the money, one. And two, submission is so much more than just, it's not about control. It's about yielding yourself to someone else that will make decisions that will impact not just that person, but you as well. And so when you talk about submission, you can't just talk about it from what the woman should do, you know? Um, and, and that's just, that's a big part of the puzzle that's missing. And that's just one of the Black manosphere issues. There are so many other areas that I find, you know, problematic. You know, I know that the, there's a big issue about Black women having children outside of wedlock. I am a strong proponent of having children inside of a marriage, a committed relationship where you have decided I will have a life with this person okay now i know that marriages don't always work out but i'm a strong component of deciding for one thing that you're not even going to share your body with somebody that's not committed to you but 
that's a different issue. But also that you're not having a child and you're not having unprotected sex with somebody that has no intention of sharing a life with you and having a family with you. What we see, though, with the Black manosphere is that they understand that very well when it comes to women. OK. Oh, she is the she controls sex. She controls the doorway to sex as though they have no role in making a baby. And they do. I, I want to try to find it. But there is this post that represents this sentiment that is commonly shared amongst black men where the, the, the guy asked someone asked, why would you impregnate a girl? Why would you have a baby with this chick, you know, and you don't even like her? And the response from a man was, well, because she let me. And that is a commonly shared sentiment amongst men in the Black manosphere. We see it every day. So that's my issue with the Black manosphere is that you all talk about accountability, but I do not see accountability on your part. I don't see it. And I believe you all tell a lot of lies. But we can talk about these lies later. There, y'all lie. You can look up the statistics and see a lot of the lies that you all tell. But we can talk about that later. And and I do want to say I think that black men should have a voice. Like, you know, I think we need a little clarity on how you have not had a voice because I think that you guys have had a voice. You just chosen to use it the way that you use it. You, I mean, we've all been marginalized from Hollywood from entertainment. You know, I know people always talk about Oprah. Oprah had a show. She had this. But Arsenio all had a show. Um, who else? Bill Cosby had a show. You know, you guys have had a voice, you know, no more or less of a voice than what Black women have had. Hip hop. Come on now. Hip hop runs like it's all over the world. So you've had a voice. Black men have definitely had a voice. And I agree with what Cannon was saying is that you guys have always blamed us. Like there, I, I can't remember a time in my own life where we were not talked about. We were always the ones with the bad attitude, the ghetto. It's it's always been that. So to say that the black man is is giving you all a voice, I think is a lie. It's an absolute lie because you have had a voice. I think that maybe you just didn't have some of those barber school barbershop talks that you all typically have. But I mean, I, I think we, we know black men have always considered black women not the ideal. So I, I think we and also to have some um, solutions, we have to get some common ground on what has really happened. Like, is it really true that we just have never listened to you all? Like, is it really true that we just don't submit? Like, is that really true? You know? Yeah, Ashley, I, I just want to add one thing before we uh, move forward and I'll give uh, someone else a chance to respond to. I think that the overall, see, I look at things, I don't look at things in a very minute, small vacuum, right? And I think that that's what's happening a lot of times. That's why I say I think that the black manosphere thinks that they are uniquely dispositioned in this world where they're like, oh, these are new things, right? Um, I think that it's important for us to remember that Time does not go backwards, right? We're not going to go back in time to anything. We have to be aware of how things like technology um, and what is going on around us socially affect our behaviors as human beings, right? When we have certain environments, we behave a certain way. It's just that simple. I think that when we try to um, paint this picture, or I, I think that it's important to understand that uh, how many people, I wonder how many people are familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? That is um, that people have like five basic needs that they need to have met, right? That's their psychological needs, which would be things like um, breathing, food, water, shelter, clothing, sleep, things like that. That's the biggest need, right? That's the main need. Then you have safety and security, which is uh, health, employment, property, family, social stability, then you have self-esteem. I mean, I'm sorry, you have love and belonging, which is uh, like friendships, family, intimacy, sense of connection. You have self-esteem. That is uh, a need, which uh, is confidence, achievement, respect of others, and the need to be a unique individual. And then finally, you have self-actual 
uh, actualization. And that's uh, morality, creativity, spontaneity, acceptance, things like that, purpose, experience, right? Before there was a time in our society and the way that humans um, were interacting and engaging with each other, that our psychological needs, that we needed um, like things like getting married or having partners and different things like that for simple things like food, water, shelter, right? We needed it. Like we depended on it. We, we, we depended on each other. Like we had farms, we hunted, we did, you know, we had to do those things together in order to make sure that it was accomplished. We also needed uh, each other for like safety, like to, for family, for social stability, like those types of things. I think it's important to realize that in 2021, as a result of technology and different things like that, we no longer need each other for the basics like water, shelter. Like we've created a civilization where a lot of those things are readily available. I mean, you still have like famine and different things across the world, but especially if we wanna talk about African-Americans or we wanna talk about Americans, we're very privileged to where even the poorest of us don't, you know, can find some shelter somewhere, even if it's at a shelter, right? So we don't really need each other as much for that. The same thing when it comes to safety and security. So the next one that pops in too will be love and belonging. And I think that what is happening <laughs> is that we have men, and this is not just black men. This is why I say it's important to realize this is a bigger phenomenon. It's not just black men who are complaining about these things. I think that you have men who generation after generation after generation have been able to fall back on the psychological needs of women being met and the safety and security needs as the fallback. Like, oh, well, you need me to feel these things. So I could just be however, I could do whatever, I could say whatever, and this is this is what you need me for. But I think that because of technology and the way societies are changing, that since that's no longer the case, a lot of men are having a hard time switching to meeting the different needs like love and belonging, self-esteem, self-actualization. And I think that we have to be more adaptable as humans. Like we have to understand we're not going backwards. I mean, it could be an apocalypse. And then if that happens, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But <laughs> the, the situation that we have in front of us, we're not in caves. We're not hunter gatherers. Like we're not doing any of those things, right? We have built up these huge civilizations. So the way that we interacted with each other has to change get on board. That's just what it is. Like we're complaining about stuff that's not going to change because we no longer interact that way. We we don't need to. So be adaptable and it's okay. And I think people would be a lot happier if they were <laughs> better at adapting. But and that's Kenna, I, I, I do want to so, respond to that after someone else. Go ahead. Well, I wanted to um, ask you a question. So I get what you're saying. We have to change with the times, right? Um, but what about people who are a little bit more traditional and they do believe in submission? And then not just that, what about all the other things that, you know, you hear black men complain about? You know, um, there are so many things. They run the gamut of all the things that are wrong with black women, right? We don't pick the right men. We like thugs. Um, we don't want, want average men. We're used up. We're bitter. There's so many different things, right? So that speaks to the submission part, you know. But then again, there are people who want submission. There are women who want submission, you know. So what about the other things, okay. you know? Um, I, what about the other things? And what? It, where is the disconnect? Where is the disconnect between Black men and Black women um, about all of these things? So, so can uh, I, can Rashad, I just... and then go ahead, Darwin. All right, I just want to respond okay. to to what you said, Kenan. Um, in regards is we're not going backwards, adjust to the change. Again, I'm very statistics based. Today, in Amer African Americans, eighty percent of Black kids are born from single parent households, born out of wedlock. In 1960 something, like mid 60s, it was only 25 percent. Is that the type of adjustment we want to accept? Is Do you know the reason for that? There could be many reasons. I, I have, I mean, I've listened to theories and, you know, many reasons, but. No, no, you're a statistics based and I like that. But yes. do you know why that number looks that way? Why, 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 why the number was higher in the 60s of children born uh, out of wedlock? I mean, was lower in the 60s of children born out of wedlock. Do you know how that's calculated? I don't know how it's calculated. 
Okay, I, I think it's, and I'll just give give you this real quick. There were more black women in general were having babies in the 60s. More people were married in the 60s. So black women uh, who were having babies took up a larger percentage of the births because how they calculate that is they take all births from women, right? And from black women. And then they say, this is the percentage of all those births that's out of wedlock, right? So what has happened over time is that the birth rate overall, like less black women are having babies, period, first of all. So there's not more kids being born out of wedlock. There's actually less kids because less black women have been getting married and have been opting not to have children at all. And less married black women are having children. So they take up a smaller proportion of the out of wedlock birth. And I think that that's important to understand because the way that you just said it and the way I feel like a lot of people think that it means understand this to me is that uh, behavior has shifted so dramatically on the side of women just being like, I'm going to have all these kids out of wedlock. There's not more women. Let me put it this way. There's less black women having children out of wedlock overall in general than happened in the 60s. There were more women having kids out of wedlock in the 60s, but there were more women having kids within wedlock uh, in the 60s. So they took up a larger share of that percentage. But since they stopped having so many kids, then the people who are still having kids out of wedlock started to take a larger share, even though the overall birth rate is decreasing overall. So our fertility and birth rate is going down across the board. And that's also important to remember. It's also important to understand that out of wedlock <clears throat> and uh, single are two different things. There's a lot of people that are opting not to get legally married anymore because it's not really as necessary socially. That doesn't mean that there aren't fathers there and that doesn't mean that they're doing it by themselves. So it just the out of wedlock birth rate doesn't account for that. So Overall, like I say, black women are having less children in general, and a lot uh, more black women are opting not to have children than in times past. That's important to understand when it comes to that statistic. I guess I, I, I'm a little slow. Maybe I didn't follow too much. So you're just saying the volume of black women is decreased having kids. Correct. To so I'm saying women. like if if more married black women begin to have children now, they would take up a greater share of that out of birth like out of birth. Out of wedlock birth rate, if more married women would have children. Okay. There's a few ways to look at that, but I guess I look at it from the child's perspective, the black child's perspective. E either way you, I guess, view it, still 80%. And we can say just from that 80%, maybe 65, 70% are have the father in the home with them. Maybe that's the case, but regardless, it's still the vast majority probably do not. And that's the thing that I think is harming our community the most with that. Like regardless of the number, still the percentage of families are children are being raised by a single parent, most likely single right. mother in those situations. So, so that's a perspective I'm looking at it from. Yeah. And I look at it from their perspective too. I appreciate what Cannon was saying and I'm trying to find the stat, but she's right. Fewer black women are having children. I, I like that stat only because I think the narrative that the Black Manosphere paints is that Black women are just so irresponsible. You know, we're just out here screwing, making babies. That's the narrative that you all paint. The truth of the matter is that almost half of us do not have children. So it's not 80% of Black women are with um, our, our, um, our single moms. That's not the stat. The statistic is that, like you were saying, 80% of children that are born are born to single mothers, okay? So for one, I want to be clear about that because nobody talks about that. The narrative is always Black women just out here screwing everybody, you know, and anybody. and They're not using protective sex or, or, or using protection <coughs> during sex. The truth of the matter is that many of us do not have children. Many of us do not, okay? And 40% of us do not have children, okay? But I agree with you um, that the ones who, the children that are being born are important. And, and we need to talk about why they are being born outside of wedlock. I completely agree with that. So my solution is for, I'm a big proponent of sexual discretion, okay? And yes, I have practiced it in my life, okay? I ain't gonna get into too much detail, but I've practiced it so I can talk about it. 
I am a proponent of that. I think women have to use more sexual discretion, and I think men have to use more sexual discretion. The problem, though, with the Black manosphere is that you all don't think you have to. You think because you're men, and when I say you, I don't mean you per se, Rashad, just the general you. What, Wait, I'm I, I'm just <laughs> <Go>. <laughs> what I am seeing is that the accountability is not on the man. You know, you know, I, I can, I'm a man. That's what I do. And here's the thing. I'm not making excuses for women. I think women have to make better choices. And I want to talk about that on this show. But a lot of times these women are getting into relationships with these men who are telling them lies, who are leading them on, moving in with them, okay, and making them think that there's a life, a family ahead, and it's not. So I also think men ha are accountable too. And how many men do you know, Rashad, that never had any intention on being with a woman, you know, um, just wanted to have sex, didn't even know the woman and made a baby with the woman. That, that happens too, and it's the woman's fault, but it's also the man's fault. You know, so, I'll look back at the statistics, but go ahead. I'm sorry. No, the statistics of what? I mean, these women are not having babies by themselves. OK, so again, um, you said 60 percent of black women have children. I think the statistics I saw was like 63 percent over the age of 18 black women have children. I didn't see whether it was, it was married or unmarried. Um, however, for black men, 49 um, percent of black men have children over the age of 18. Okay. So there's a big disparity and there. Have, so let me, so this is another point of contention with me in the black manosphere. So you have to remember that there are more women than men, okay? There are quite a bit more of us than there are of you. So the fractions are not the same. You can't say, oh, 50% men, that's like half a man. But there are also a whole lot more of us. So even though our percentage might be a little lower, there are a whole lot more of us than there are of you. So 40% is not the same, but you're making it seem like there's this vast difference. Well, that, I feel like that, that supports what I'm saying even more. Well, basically what has happened, these 60% of women, Black women who are having these children are having children by men who have multiple children, men who are making baby mamas, like multiple baby mamas. That's 49% of the men. So it's majority are doing it wrong or are, are doing it right. 51% are quote unquote doing it right where the 49%, even though it's still close 50, 50, but these women are getting pregnant by the same men. That's why the percentage is different. That, but that doesn't even make sense. I hear this all the time. I wish I had like a stats person on because that does not make sense. Because but time out. Talking about <laughs> We're not just talking about women and men in one geographical area. We're talking about men and black men and women across the whole United States. Yeah. So you're you're saying that the 60 percent, let's say 60 percent. And then we also have to delve into this 52 um, percent of black men don't have kids. That's not true. That's only That's up until a certain exactly. age. Exactly. You have to consider age. Most black men in our age is. I think it was like 70%. I'm going to pull up the statistics while you guys are talking. But most Black men at marrying ages, our ages, in their 30s, have children. So we ain't even talking about 18-year-olds. Ain't nobody trying to marry no 18-year-olds. You know, I mean, at least not women. You know, we're talking about marriageable men, marriageable age, right? Most of you all have children. So it's that's that statistic that I know Kevin Samuels likes to throw out there, but it's so misleading. It's so misguided. And it's just funny to me, just from personal experience, when I hear that, because it usually comes from men who have kids. And I'm like, chances, chances are that if you are above 30, you have a child. Okay. So, and I'm not quite sure that just because there are more of you all or fewer of you all having babies, that that must mean that the women are having babies with multiple men. Um, no, no, no. Men are having you know, other way around. Are people, yeah, that women are having babies or that women are having babies with men who um, 
have, have multiple baby from other women. Uh, yeah. But here, but you have to remember that um, a lot of women have multiple children. So I don't know. I don't know if that's like a trend. Like how how do you? They just that? deduce that I, on not, their own. Like they I just guess. like like they think causation uh, correlation equals causation. It's like they're like, oh, okay, this thing is true. So that means this thing must be true. I, I just have I just have you know I'm a simple person, right? And, and a lot of times when men say. Oh, women are having these babies out of way like that, it, it kind of seemed like they're they not taking in, in, into account that they having these babies with a man right so all these statistics that they make that they that they have are basically lies right because like you said you can break it down like like as you said it's more women out here than men right so if you want to take that statistic and say 63 percent of women are having uh, kids out of wedlock as opposed to 49% of men or whatever. The, that's because it's more women, right? So that statistic means nothing. It really means nothing. And, and, and a lot of statistics don't mean anything. Are you? Are we taking care of these kids? That's the bottom line. Are we taking care of these kids at the end of the day? Is the man taking care of the kids? Is the woman taking care of the kids? It doesn't really matter if they had the kid out of wedlock, they married or not, because everybody had their different beliefs. It, um, Ashley, she's a Christian, so of course she wants to get married and have kids, and it's next. Some people don't want to get married, and it's okay to have a kid, right? Because that's all that means, right? So, what, what, what? That statistic doesn't mean anything. Because if, if a person doesn't want to get married, you can't sit up and say they're wrong for not for having a kid because they didn't want to get married. Because no, I agree, Darwin. I agree, hundred yeah, percent. We can't change the statistic. stigma. Yeah, fall into that statistic of mm. being one of those people that's in that sixty-three percentile that says, "Oh, you're having kids out of wedlock. So what? I didn't want to get married." Exactly. What, what, what you mean so what though? Like everybody's not a Christian. Everybody's not going to go to a church to get a, a piece of paper. Their marriage is not any less invalidated than somebody that's, else's. That's but again, at the end of the day, we're looking at two parent households for children. Again, is and that's not quantified by a piece of paper. Is it more counterproductive to have have you a child be raised by a family? Doesn't change anything. So, so people, you're saying it's better for a kid, or equal for a kid, to be raised with one parent versus a mother and father in the Tell home. me when I said that. I'm asking people, you. People I did not say that. that. I said the piece of paper does not invalidate their relationship. Okay, exactly. but are most of these situations just a mother and You're father? You're the statistic, right man. Together? You tell me. I, I don't know that statistic. I'll okay, say that. well, then you can't but say that out of wedlock, all a man means woman only. I, I know the statistic. Out okay. of the 80%, 46% are cohabitating. So almost 50%, okay? So I'm pro-marriage. I'm pro walk down the aisle before the pastor say i do in the name of god okay i'm pro marriage that's me okay but let's be real about the situation the black manosphere is adamant that black women are the reason why we have all these these children without um both their parents okay yes. now of the 80% of the children that are born outside of a marriage, a good almost half of them are cohabitating. So these are men that are having unprotected sex with women that they are living with. Okay? So why is it that the black man is here continues to point the finger at black women for this out of red lock weight rate? A birth rate. If y'all care about it so much, then why are you not marrying these women? You making babies with them. So that's, and I'm not saying that that negates a woman's responsibility to close her legs and say, no, you ain't committed to me. I'm not giving my body to you. But there are men, the very same ones who are complaining about all these children being born outside of wedlock and women raising weak boys and all who are who are living with these women and they are not committing. So just by the numbers, everything that y'all stand on is not true. Just by the numbers, everything you stand on is weak. That's what we're talking about. I'm just trying to find the statistics. I'm going to find these statistics because I no. want to put them up. Uh, uh, a lot of these black men, they say things, but they don't back it up. 
I'm backing okay. up what I what we're talking let's, about. Let's let's step ahead. away. Let's step away from the statistics, right? Let's get down to it, right? Because you said it earlier. Lies, right? Men lie. Men lie. We were raised to lie. And that's just the bottom line of it. And I can go around the room and ask every woman, have did your father tell did, did any woman father ever tell them to go out and have sex with as many dudes they want? I'm pretty sure y'all gonna say no. Men grow up in a system. We in a society where men grow up and we get congratulated at very young ages when we have first have sex. Don't matter if we're 12 years old, we get congratulated by our uncles, fathers, friends for having sex. And it doesn't matter. So that's right there's conditioning men to do these things, right? And then we we even the mothers, even the even the mothers, and this is just unconscious, right? We don't think about it. But this the, the famous saying, a man go be a man, a man go be a man, a man go be a man, right? That changed. When that changed, it became it became a man is a liar, a cheater, a, a sex offender, all this stuff. Men didn't want to hear the real truth. Women was covering this up by saying a man gonna be a man back in the day. But when they got down to the nitty gritty and said a man is a liar, a cheater, a sex offender, um, that's when men start having a problem with women talking, right? Because now now they're like, oh, they calling me out on my on my stuff. We don't want to hear that. So they came up with these statistics to try to shame y'all and shut shut y'all up. Well, oh y'all having these these kids out of wedlock. So what? You know, y'all giving us these kids out of wedlock. Y'all the ones impregnating us. So why are you now flipping on us and saying that it's our fault? Like, it, we, 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 the statistics the statistics don't mean anything because you can flip that how you want to to um, drive a point or whatever. But but everybody was raised differently. But for the most part. Women were raised not to be having all these sexual partners, and men were raised to conquer women. Point blank. That's just that's just what it is. Now, it's, uh, don't we have some one-offs and some men wasn't raised that way? And that's fine and damn. I'm not saying every man. But for the majority of the men in this world, we were raised to conquer women. Point blank. I, 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 and, and the way the world is set up now, you can see it. It's just the way the – no man has ever walked up on a woman and said, hey, the only reason I'm talking to you is because you have a big booty and I want to have sex with you. But that'd be the truth. So what they're going to tell a woman is, hey, beautiful, how you doing? Let me get to know you. But in the back of their mind, the only agenda is to have sex. Because like you said, with all these men ain't marrying these women, right? They Very just true. have sex with them and impregnate them. But if men were really honest with a woman said, hey, you have a big ass. I just want to have sex with you. We know they're not going for that. So we're going to lie, manipulate them to get what we want out of them. And that has conditioned this... um this toxic relationship between men and women because the men have been more toxic than, than the women, right? And I'm just going to say it because I used to be one of those, right? I used to do those things, and, and I didn't know why I did it. I, did, I just thought it was I'm being a man. I'm supposed to get a woman. I'm supposed to get all these women. Uh, my, my, my people looking up to me. I'm getting congratulated by my, my uncles, my fathers, this and that. That's what was happening. That's, that's the world that we live in, you know? And uh, behind the scenes, we, we, that's how we talk. And a, that's, that's barbershop talk. And I know I'm not supposed to be saying a lot of this stuff because it's a man code, but I don't do that man code stuff because I, I just want to, I, w- I want relationships to be better. So I want to put stuff out on the table. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is, you know? And, I, and I'm pretty sure women have their flaws. I'm not trying to say women don't. Women do have their flaws. But as a leader, that's not my place. My place is to find a way to get a woman to see things my way so we can move forward, right? And if she can't see things my way, then I'm just not going to be with that woman. And I'm not going to say anything is bad with that woman. It's just we didn't work out, you know? She has her own thing. I have my own thing. Now, she can go find a man who she can relate to and she wants to do those things with, and that's that. I don't really like to say right and wrong, you know? Everybody has their match made in heaven, and I think a lot of men need to realize that and drop their ego and pride. That woman don't like what you're doing. Nothing's wrong with her. Just move around. You know, just, you know, nothing. She's not a bad woman. She's not, um, she, she does. She, most women do understand you. And men always say, oh, you just don't understand. No, she understands. She just don't agree. And she just don't want to deal with that. You know? So I think we, we need to start getting down to like the root of what's really going on. And I know it's hard because a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people just don't want to take accountability for their wrong and doing things. And um, so that they're, they're going to cover up things and, you know, lie because they, they have an image to protect or whatever. But if we really want to get, fix these problems, we have to start telling the truth, being honest. 
Yeah, and, to me. And, sorry, go ahead. And and let me just say this: we 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 also, you know, I'm, I'm all for statistics and you know the knowledge and. But we, we got to start using this stuff to figure out what's going to be the next level. You know, how do we how do we reduce some of these harms in our communities uh, with the information that we know and we've gathered about each other? Because I think we have a tendency and, and this is kind of my beef, if you will, with the manosphere sometimes is that you have individuals within who are just, you know, we just slinging mud at each other. We in one big old puddle talking about how dirty everybody is and ain't nobody getting out the, out the puddle and ain't nobody stopped throwing mud. We just going back and forth, back and forth. Well, we really need to figure out how is this dysfunction between men and women, how it's spreading abroad and causing harm in the black community as a whole. You know, um, I think that a lot of times as far as with sex relationships, you know, I, I mean, I'm a Christian woman. I consider myself somewhat traditional. I consider myself a submissive wife. Um, but I accept that not every woman is going to move the way I'm going to move. And I think when we talk about, you know, shifting gears and like I said, changing some of these, you know, these harms, we got to start showing people, you know, what are the benefits of certain things if you live this way, you know, how could, you know, like with our teenage, teenage boys and teenage girls, you know, uh, let, let me show you what are the benefits if you start really taking sexual responsibility seriously, or let me show you the, the, the pros versus the cons of you, you know, sleeping around. We got to start having conversations versus trying to shame blame and throw mud to get people to change what they're doing because the reality of it is is that there are a lot of black men and women who are taking accountability there are there are a lot of us in the community that are changing i think i think the the question that i have though is when they talk about black women need to take more accountability exactly what black women are y'all talking about because you're going to have a percentage of black women who guess what you know, and this is not me shaming or, or, or me, you know, judging anyone. Teenage pregnancy, it ain't going nowhere. Um, people having kids out of wedlock, it's not going anywhere. Um, men who, you know, th they were not taught sexual responsibility and women not taught sexual responsibility. They're not going anywhere. So I guess my question is, when we talk about accountability, okay, now we've identified the group that might need to take accountability. Okay, where do we go from here, though? How do we educate them? How do we get to them? Because us sitting in that puddle throwing mud back and forth at each other saying, oh, y'all did it. No, you did it. Y'all need to get married. Y'all need to pick better. Well, y'all need to know, y'all need to show discipline. You need to do this. We've been doing this for a long time. We've been doing this for a very long time. It's really now time to figure out how do we how do we capture the audience that we really need to be capturing? Because I could tell you, um, for instance, the, the group of children that my, my my daughter hangs out with, what I what I like to fictionally call my mom group, the majority of us, we black. The majority of us, we're married. The majority of those kids, they were born within a black marriage and a black home. So there is a population that I think the manosphere is missing. And I think that we get the brunt of it of women need to be held more accountable. Well, I'm, I'm not the TikTok chick, okay? I'm, I'm not the, the girl who, who, you know, she don't work, she ain't worked a job a day in her life, but she getting seven, eight hundred dollars in food stamps. I'm not her. So my question to the manosphere is how are we gonna get to her? How are we going to get to the guy that keeps impregnating her? Because you're bringing it to us and we see what you see. So we got to stop throwing mud. We got to start figuring out how we're going to reach this population together. But we can't do that if 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 we're just, it's you, 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 you. So yeah. I wanted to say that, you know. I dig that. I dig that a lot. And I, and I do want to say, because I see this a lot too. And again, like I said, I'm very statistics based. We can't always confuse stating statistics, facts, things like that, even though the facts might be negative, it's not to be looked at as a negative or positive thing. It's just what it is. It's the facts. So it's like, what are we going to do with that? Now, what you say about the men who are impregnating these women, the men creating baby mamas, 
I 100% agree with y'all. If y'all are part, if a man is part of that problem and he's over there basically sounding like me, like blaming black women for having kids, but he's the one impregnating women, creating baby mamas. Nah, to me, a man like that is null and void. Like, no, you're 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 part of the problem, and even if you are part of the problem, you can you can still speak on it, but you have to speak on it. You have to take accountability yourself for being a part of that problem as well. So if you know we're seeing men who are part of that problem, you know, dogging women, like nah, forget what they say. But again, like you said, show the the benefits of doing things the right way, uh, and that could possibly. Uh, I guess inspire people to do more of that. However, again, I feel like we just haven't been seeing that. But again, because the norm is the non-nuclear family within our community, so there's just not enough examples of the right for the majority of us to see to emulate. I know you and your circle may have that situation, but that's literally the minority of African Americans. I t I wanted to. Oh, I wanted to add something to Rashad to what you were saying about those statistics and things like that, right? I'm not going to argue statistics. I'm not going to debate it. I'm not going to say that they don't matter um, or anything like that. Um, but what I will say is that um, the, the problem is not the statistic being negative or positive or problems with statistics. The problem is, is that a lot of people don't understand how to interpret statistics, people and, and running away with narratives of what a statistic means, that there's no evidence in that actual uh, information that tells you that. And I'll use a prime example. You can look, the, look at the statistic that says black men um, take up the majority of prison inmates. Right. That's the statistic. That's just the fact. That's just the reality of it. Right. But you can take a narrative and say, well, that's because they're uniquely criminal, right? Because they are dumb or because they are more violent or whatever you want to say that that means. But when you actually dig into the information, you learn about things like uh, over policing. You learn about dis dis disparate um, prison sentences. You learn about all of these other things that don't mean that they're uniquely criminal, right? So what I'm saying is, is that we can't just take numbers. Right. And then make it mean what we want it to mean just because we made it up, just because it's what we want to believe that it means. And that's what I see happening a lot of times where it's like this is this. is it. So this means that like it, it, and when you actually look at the information that's presented, none of where in there does it say any of that stuff. <laughs> and it's like, OK, um, I, I also wanted to add and I'll just say this. And I'm going to lead the whole situation along because I don't got no problem with none of this stuff because <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't care about it, really. Like, it's just crazy to me. But <laughs> I'll just say this. I think that it's important for us to realize that um, a lot of times we are uh, deeply, um, deeply uh, products of our environments. Right. And I'll say that because I, I was born in Chicago. Right. Born, born and raised south side of Chicago. That's where I live, grew up, whatever. Um, the things that I was exposed to and the things that I was around, I did not realize that Chicago was one of the most segregated cities in the country. I didn't know that. Right. Because what what do we always learn? The, the South is the most racist. Like that's the most racism, whatever. And when you're born in it, you don't know. When I moved to Atlanta, there were there there was me seeing black people doing things that I never saw black people doing in Chicago. Right. Because when you nine times out of 10 live in Chicago as a black person, you're nine times out of 10 going to live around other black people. And it's nine times out of 10 going to be poverty. It's going to be uh, extreme abject poverty. Like that's just what it's going to be. Everybody around you going to be poor. Right. And if you want to go to a nice area, it's going to need to be a white area. That's just what it's going to be. When I came to Atlanta, I saw black people doing things I never saw black people doing. That opened up my mind set to say, oh, well, I could, I could, I could probably do that stuff, too. I did not realize at the time that I didn't think I could do that stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's really easy to sit there and not look at none of the uh, socioeconomic uh, issues, to look at none of the environments, to look at black people have always been at the bottom, always. And everything that impacts this country negatively impacts us most negatively because we already at the bottom. So that's just the fact of it. So I think that if we're going to be trying to speak to people and we're going to be trying to empower people and make people better, then we have to start meeting people where they are. Right. And stop uh, acting like 
that we are not products of our environments because we really are. It's really difficult to see the forest for the trees a lot of times. And a lot of times you can't grow when you don't even have exposure to different things. So to just sit here and point to things like this person doing it, a lot of people doing stuff out of trauma and dysfunction. This is what's happening, period. So what is all of this fussing and yelling finna do? Just more drama and dysfunction, that's it. So I just think people need to invest in some therapy and let's, I mean, if we don't really try to help people, let's try to help them for real. You know what I'm saying? Let's stop bl blaming and shaming since you like statistics so much and you like, you know, data and facts. It's a fact that there is no, nothing anywhere that shows that shaming people makes any, any positive change. It doesn't. Yeah. It does not. So it doesn't make sense to sit and be like, I'm going to make this better because if I shame, no, that doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't. I so okay. that's just my little two cents I wanted to add to it. Let me ask one question. Say something about, okay. Go ahead, Dara. No, go ahead, I just man. want to say something about what uh, Miss Jojo Jovo, Jovo said uh, about the uh, about the group that she's in, the women that she's around, and how they're not like the the um, the TikTok chicks stuff like that. She's absolutely right. I just want to um, just say get get my little point across about this about a lot of people always saying women like the bad boys. Women like the bad boys, right? Well, I think men like the thoughts, right? Because and, and I, I know I, all four of you women, I'm pretty sure you don't have men on your DMs sending you um, dick pics and stuff like that, right? Because y'all not those type of women, right? Y'all carry yourselves differently, right? So and, and to, it's, to society, y'all are less desirable. Not because I'm, you're all beautiful women, but you're less desirable to the men out here because you're not on on, on, on um, TikTok showing your boobs. You're not saying all these nasty things. You're not giving off that um, sex appeal that you're not supposed to give out and put in the public eye, right? So you're less desirable to, to men. But these men, they go to the, we go to the strip clubs. We spend all this money looking at these thoughts. We um we go out. We talk to the to the woman that's the less dress the less dressed woman, right? They get all the attention, right? So when when I hate I hate the narrative when they say women like the bad boys. Well, men like thoughts. So we need to just acknowledge these things and, like you said, start uh, mm -hmm. spreading the benefits of being together and being a family and being joined, right? And because a lot, a lot of my friends said when I got married, oh, you you get locked down, oh, you going to jail, no, oh, you get you get cuffed up. That's that's negative, right? But now all my friends are congratulating, man. You, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I'm you did, did this, you have a good thing going, and I think more men like me need to start spreading that word like man having a wife is is, is the bomb is, is, is the bomb thing to do you know settling down being a family xyz and stop trying to be in this little macho category trying to impress everybody like oh yeah you know i run no this this was the best thing ever happened to me i think and, and all my friends and family members see that right and they see the change they see from where i came from to where i'm at now how, how happy I'm, i am and how much growth you can attain with the person that you respect, right? It ain't just the person that you like and this and that. You have to respect a woman to grow with her. If you, because women go feel the, the disrespect, and they're not going to listen to that. You know, and that's why I think a lot of men they don't understand that. Like, if a woman doesn't respect you, she's not she's not going to listen to you. And I think that's where the disconnect come in. That when a, a man just feels obligated and has this privilege that a woman is just supposed to listen and follow you no matter what, just because we have a dick. That's that how they go. They have to, you have to make them respect you. We we have to be forceful about respect and not forcible forceful about all these um, arbitrary things. You know what I mean? Like oh, you need to do this. You need to cook. You need to nah. Be respectful and just just show their respect. You know. And then I'm I'm done with the whole manosphere thing, you know. Uh, so yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll be done with the manosphere. I know we have other All topics right, Rashad, too. You wanted to ask Was that? Go ahead. You wanted to ask something. You oh, okay. To ask something so, before Brian was. Yeah, about. yeah. So one question, I guess this is uh, for you, Cannon, or, or I guess anybody, as far as being looked at as like, you know, speaking negatively on something or someone or placing blame or speaking negatively on black women. So again, back to statistics, because this is just normally how I communicate when it comes to issues. If I simply said the statistics, I know you broke them down more, but if I simply said the statistics that 63% of black women are... Uh, 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 um, so if I said 63% of black women are 
Yeah, I heard an echo too. Everyone's hearing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if I should go or what. Are oh, they cannons off? Uh oh, we we lost. We lost some people. Yeah, <laughs> like three oh, people. Okay. I'll wait a second for them to come back on. Okay. Oh, Candace said you can hear me. Okay, okay. So if again, if I simply just shared the statistic, 60% of black women have kids um, out of wedlock versus 49% of black men have kids out of wedlock. Therefore, black women are contributing more to this issue than black men currently. Do you as a black woman look at that as me attacking black women? or just simply stating the statistic. Cause I'm looking at it as I'm just stating the statistic. That's that's what I'm looking at. I'm not saying anything negative or positive. I'm just saying like, hey, this is what it is. And so, and black women are uh, contributing to this issue currently more than black men. I'm not trying to dog y'all or anything. I'm just saying what it is. What, what, I don't what, say what, that, I that, that statistic again. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't see that. Oh, she want to hear the stat again. Oh, the stat. Okay. So 63% of black women over the age of 18, I believe, have children. Uh, again, I'm not sure if this statistic was out of wedlock or not, but let's just say out of wedlock for the my example. Then I say 49% of black men have children out of wedlock. They're, therefore, black women are currently contributing to this issue more than black men. Do you as a black woman look at it as look at that as an attack? Regardless of this statistic is right or wrong, I'm just saying like if I'm saying something like that, it, do you look at it as I'm dogging black women by stating that? No. Okay. Me either. Okay. I, I just want us to look at it as uh, I, of the stat is are the is the problem. Is the stats are not the problem. The misuse of the stats are the problem. And also, you guys are saying, oh, stats don't, you know, stats. Uh oh. Oh, we lost Ashley. Uh -oh. <laughs> <For> a second. <laughs> hey, you know, you know stats, right? So I just, <laughs> why are you even laughing at me? So, <laughs> so say I, I played sports in high school, right? I mean, I'm a sports guy. So say um, I'm playing basketball and my team won and I had 30 points, right? I won, we had 30 points, this and that. Now, someone's going to come and be like, yeah, you had 30 points, but you shot you shot 10 for 40. So your percentage <laughs> is 25%. Russell Westbrook. Right. What was the point of them telling me that? But are we winning? I, I won the game and I scored 30 points. But are we winning? Exactly. So, like, that's how no. the stats are, right? That's when, when people put out stats about stuff like that, I look at them like, why, why you just say that? Why are you trying to throw some shame on somebody? You trying to hate and, and, and discredit what I just did? You know, like, like, like stats, like, I, I'm not saying you, because I think you're genuine when you put up stats because you just want to know the information and stuff like that. You want to get to the nitty gritty. And some people use stats to try to, um, to try to figure things out. I don't too much use stats to figure things out. I try to go on most of the emotion and like how I'm, you know, how the how I'm interacting with people and how the, um, the social climate is, right? And a lot, a lot of people use stats, and um, I think a lot of stats can get can misconstrue you. So that's why I don't use stats because it can it. They say numbers don't lie, but they be lying. And these numbers be lying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, emotions lie. Emotions are misleading. That's that's the opposite of what needs to be done. And I feel yeah, like that's you, kind of the issue. There's well, too much emotion put in things instead of just looking control, at it for what it is. When you can't control your emotions and you and you and you don't have the emotional attitude to know what's going on. Like a lot of men say, I'm not I'm I don't I, I, men are not emotional creatures. We very are. We we're very emotional. We we're we're more. I think we're more emotional than women, if you ask me. Because when we get the, our emotions takes to the to the next nothing. People get end up getting hurt, seriously damaged when we get emotional. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like men walk out on their families because they're emotional. Men go and kill their wives because they're emotional. Men go kill their best friends because they're emotional. So it, it's like, you know, the stats. Yeah, emotions do lie. You're definitely right. And, and I, and if I can, gentlemen and, and ladies, let me just add this too. 
I think the manosphere sometimes paints a picture that a lot of brothers and sisters, particularly sisters, we're not really fully, we don't have a full state of awareness of what's going on in our community. Let me just say as a mental health provider, I'm fully aware <laughs> of what's going on in our community. The thing is, is that I have to kind of empower change in the parts that I know I have control over. And that's the other part too. A lot of us, we, 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 we let insight on what we actually have control over. And, and, and the, if you will, the ratchets, the, like I said, the, the people who might be misinformed or that they're not fully aware. Um, we tend to, just like Cannon said, we got to start meeting people where they are. And we tend to think that everybody got to have this sense of awareness right now. The change in the black community gonna have, is going to have to happen in stages, like everything else in life happens in stages. Change is not like, you know, it ain't instant grits. Can't add water, butter, and stir, and here they go. It's, it's not going to happen that way. So I think that, like I said in the beginning, I think they started out with the mission of being effective, and they identified a mission. Okay, we need to, you know, X, Y, and Z. We need to, um, you know, be more accountable. We need to work on, you know, black men in general. And then they got stuck on one speaking point, which was, okay, the women who raised us, they messed up. We, we understand that there are some dysfunctional homes in the black community. We understand that. I guess my focus is when they talk about is it effective, what are they willing to do to, to spread this message abroad in a way where it's like, okay, we know the problem, now let's go for the solution. What do we need to do differently? You know, um, going back to what you guys are saying about stats, and you know, one party contributes more to the same problem, it's like, okay, we both contributing to the problem though. We, we both can all agree to that. So what are we going to do next? Because, sit, you know, going back and forth about who contributes most, it's just problem centered. That, that's just that's just my that's just my thing. You know, yeah. we, we got to come up with some solutions. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, thank you for closing us out on that topic, because I think we could talk about that all night for a couple more hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and still find some interesting things to say. But um, let's just go ahead and move on to the next topic. Um, and the next topic is going to be, are Black women uh, not expected to desire physical attraction in their partner? Like, are Black women expected not to value physical attraction? <sighs> Can I go first? <laughs> go ahead, Ms. <Mr. laughs> Novo. Right. Could you repeat that question again? I'm sorry. Are black women expected not to value physical attraction when they're deciding on a partner? Okay. Okay. We, we <laughs> so much I can say about this. So much. We're not. We're. We're. It, it's almost like we're held to this type of standard. Okay. Of, you know, is either take what y'all can get, or on the corner of take what y'all can get. And on the block of, oh, now you're asking for too much. You know, th there's no happy ground. We I want to be physically attracted to my husband. You know, I, I like his facial hair. I like his, his round. I, I, I want that. There's nothing wrong with me wanting that. We are, we, we are expected not to value physical attraction. We expected to be ride or die women who going to accept men for who they are and build them up and we're the pillar of the community when it comes to this topic. Okay? Then the next breath is, y'all need to be held accountable. <laughs> y'all need to do better. Physical attraction is not, you know, it's, it, it, it's oh, we should be able to say, oh, I'm not feeling him. I'm not attracted to him. There's nothing wrong with that. But for some reason, society thinks that, oh, sisters, y'all too hard on brothers. Or y'all want, um, my favorite one is, y'all want them to look like Russell, but you want them to act like future. You want too much. And it's like, why can't we for once be women, just like all the other women in the world, who we get a say of, this is my preference. This is what I want. Okay? Instead of, 
Oh, you got to cross all these rivers and struggle, sister, and then you're going to get the man that you want. Why can't I just point out and say, oh, I don't like him, but I like him. I've been wanting to say that all day, ever since I've seen the topic. Like, we Thank should be you. able to, like, you know, well-dressed, physically attractive men, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we're told, oh, you want too much. That's too much. And it's, I don't hear other, I don't hear men check other races of women about that, except for us. No, I, I, I think that I, I could tell you were, you were ready. I, I, I love it. Uh, <laughs> what I want to do is we haven't really heard from Raven a lot tonight. So I want Raven to respond. Then I'll give you a chance, Rashad, and then Darwin, you can go on the topic and we'll just do it that way. Uh, I'm gonna piggyback off Miss Jovo. I agree. Um, the first thing that came to mind was the Cosby Show, and I know it's just TV, but you know, Claire was oh Lord, Claire was the uh, the heartthrob. Cliff wasn't expected to be the physically attractive one, even if he was a good father and provider. So you know, it's just kind of what we're taught. But I think you gotta like who you land with. Come on now, come on. I don't even know why this is. <laughs> Yes, we we should value physical attraction because then when it doesn't get spicy, the same thing. Well, she's not interested in me. Well, she said you were ugly. So <laughs> what you want from her now? You know, um, but I think it plays a part just like it plays a part for me. And everybody's not everybody's cup of tea. My husband is tall. He's a big man. You know, every woman's not going to like a man like that. But I like him, you know, like I like him. Uh, same thing. <laughs> he like me, you know, it, what you know all right <laughs> everybody's got their thing so you know oh sorry but that's about it yeah you like what you like you don't it doesn't have to be the quintessential hollywood guy that's not what you're into that's not what you're into but you know yeah if you're attracted to him who is anybody else to stop you so all right so I am so very, very, very sorry about all of my technical difficulties. I don't want to go into too much detail, but basically I damaged the port in my house um, and I've been waiting for someone to come out. <laughs> so I'm kind of working with what I got, y'all. I damaged the port, so I'm using like my personal hotspot. But um, thank you all. I wanted to give a little background about where this question comes from, okay? So um, on um, Instagram, there is a very popular Christian minister who um, posted an exchange that he had with a, a female friend of his, okay? And so apparently she had asked him to hook her up. And so she wrote him, um, as you see at the top, you have handsome friends right here and you wanted to put me on with one I wasn't attracted to. So that's what she wrote. And then this was his replies. No, I tried to put you on with the only one who would date you. I know these men and I know their exes and the woman they currently talk to. You're dope, but it's levels to this. The man I sent you that you're not attracted to is black, single, straight, no children, his own car, own house, is tall, makes six figure, is clean cut, loves Jesus. Um, and uh, what else did it say? Loves Jesus. And he is waiting until marriage. He is a unicorn, but you're talking about him as if he be settling. And so that is what gave made me um, write this question. Um, there were a few things that stood out. Here is another part of this same exchange where he calls her dope. And he says, you know, I want her to be happy, right? Um, and then he goes on to make this an issue about Black women. And he says that this is why a lot of Black women are single, you know. And so then later on, I also had a guy post a question in our group, the ladies um, room, about physical attraction. You know, um, why is it that we don't go for the ugly guys? And then um, a couple days after that, there was a guy, I wish I could show you the screenshot, but in that um, group that we 
all were once connected to. Um, the guy told me that he hopes that he, he would never raise his daughter to be like me, <laughs> saying, and only in terms of um, wanting a man that is physically attracted. So he had asked me, so you, ha you met this guy, you met somebody who was everything you wanted, but you weren't physically attracted to him and you would turn him down. And I said, if the, if I was had no physical attraction whatsoever, then I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what I would do. And he said, well, I would raise my daughters to not be fools. Right. And so it just got me to really thinking like, is this the message and the lesson that, you know, is being taught to black women that, you know, we, we shouldn't be expecting men to be physically attractive to us. So that's where it's coming from. And I want to point out a few things about the post, but I want to hear what the guys have to say. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I was kind of on the fence where I want to go with this, but uh, first off, I, I, what type of man would even want to date a woman who and knowing that she's not even attracted to him, for one, right. that that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, I would, you know, uh, if women started dating, just just any type of man, we all be messed up. We have we have low self esteem, like most of these women have, right? Let's just let's just be true about that, because we wouldn't know. Like, dang, she she like to date all these ugly dudes, and am I ugly to her? That, you know what I'm saying? We'll be messed up. That's that that'll mess us up. Like, I, I'm I'm just assuming. I'm, you know, I'm hoping my wife likes is attracted to me, but you know, I, who knows these days. Um, but, but to the question, um, I want to say it right. What was the what was the what was the topic? So, are black women is it is it wrong for no? I'm sorry. Are black women expected not to there value physical attraction? So I'm gonna go this way with it. I I think. I think women, I think women play, place that expectation on themselves. You know, um, y'all, y'all, y'all don't go and talk to the men y'all like. Y'all sit around and wait for men to talk to y'all. So in that case, y'all just go, y'all get y'all talking to the whoever coming up to y'all talking. And I think if more <laughs> women were um, more aggressive and went and talked to the dudes that they thought was attractive. They would have the pick of the dudes that are attractive, and they can pick from that group, right? Instead of picking from the group that just comes up to them, right? Like, like men, and, and I, and I know, and I, and I can go deep, deeper into this, and and because how we were socialized, how we were brought up, men, we go after the women that we think look good. So if we talk to ten women, ten of them are we are, are we are attracted to ten of them. So if one of them falls into the other categories that we like, we good. But if ten men holler at you all. You probably gonna get eight ugly ones that you think is ugly, and two of them that you think looks good. So that minimizes your chances of selling with a attractive, fun guy and smart guy because you that you left your left, you left yourself two options. But if you went out and talked to ten guys you thought was attractive, then you would have more options in settling down with attractive guys. But because the world socializes women and says if you're aggressive, you be labeled whores and. Um, and stuff like that. I understand why you all don't take that risk and just go talking to ten guys. I understand that, but I think a lot of women have to step away from that and say f what these rules are, um, and just go for after what y'all want. And at the end of the day, y'all will be happy, right? Okay. All right. What about you, Rashad? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I didn't even know this was like a big issue in the black community with black women. <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't know this was really a thing. If anything, I thought it was almost the opposite, like uh, putting too much value on money or, you know, material things. But as far as physical, um, yeah, kind of like what Darwin said, really that's, <laughs> you know, you guys have the right to pick, you know, what men you give your attention, time, energy to. So, um, but the, that example you gave uh, with that uh, email or instant message thing, um, I would say, I guess, I mean, I agree. Like, 
anyone should be attracted to who they're with. And, you know, I don't think anyone even could be with someone who they weren't attracted to. But yeah, like I would say there needs to be a balance of how much value you put in physical attraction versus other things. Like, yeah, maybe someone's a guy might be physically attractive, but if he's unemployed, got like five kids, about four different women and, you know, all these other things. It's like, okay, how much value are you putting in attraction versus the guy who might not be as attractive, but like in that, uh, Example, you know, has doesn't have kids, makes six figures, car, job, loves Jesus, you know, all, all these other good qualities. So then if it's like those two options, it's like it's probably wiser for you as far as committing your life, your, you know, marriage, stuff like that, To You probably want to do it with, I guess, the less attractive guy. But in reality, probably the woman would pick neither. <laughs> but um, yeah, like uh, there's definitely nothing wrong with expecting to be physically attracted to your partner that goes for men and women so yeah same for for black women mm -hmm. it's different well um, i've definitely heard in the, the black manosphere and i know not every man is a part of the every man that comments on these channels are not necessarily part of the black manosphere but i have heard in these circles that it's masculine for a woman to want a man for physical attraction now obviously you don't want to let that to be the only reason you know that you you know decide to um date a man but you know i, I just never saw it as being a masculine thing but this is real this is what i heard but i do want to focus mostly on the the screenshot that i sent you guys or that i displayed um i think there's a there are a few things to dissect with that. I do believe that there are levels to this. Like he said that he says there are levels to this, right? Certain men want a, a, a woman that looks a certain way, right? That's super acceptable in society. Men of a, want women to look a certain way. All men want women to look a certain way, right? Um, and usually, if you find a certain Uh, cut out, Ashley. I'm sorry, my face when she said that somebody told her that was masculine. I'm sorry for my face. <laughs> oh Lord, y'all! I don't know what is going on. Yes, I, I'm so sorry. I basically okay. Here's a few things. I'm gonna try to make it short. Um, he himself admitted that she was a dope girl, right? Like, but for some reason, it sounds like he doesn't think she is worthy of a man that she's physically attracted to. He <laughs> dogged her out in the um, comments. Everybody else dogged her out. I mean, he didn't dog her out, but he kind of used her as an example to black women. Like, if you don't, you know, take this, you're going to be single forever. And so a lot of the people in the comment, comments, women included, were dogging her out, saying you, she has a bad attitude and et cetera, et cetera. Now, I didn't take her comments um, to be reflective of a bad attitude. I think she probably just didn't like the guy, you know. Um, now, if she was trying to be forceful about those, his other friends liking her, then she needs to take a chill pill because if they don't like her, then they don't like her, right? She, and she needs to move on. But he kind of like scolded her for wanting the man that she was attracted to. You know, I would be a little annoyed too, you know, like, man, you know, you're trying to hook me up with somebody and he's this, that, and the other, but I have no physical attraction to him. Um, so I would be a little, a little annoyed too. Um, I didn't take her response as being like having a bad attitude. Now she's trying to force the issue, then that's different. But then he goes and lists all the things that are great about him. And he said, oh, well, he has his own car. He has a job. He, he has a home. And he's like, he's a unicorn. And, and so I just thought that was a little telling. Because I'm not quite sure why is that considered a unicorn? You know, to me, the message was it's not. you're a black girl. You're a black girl, so you know what? You you need to just be happy that this man got a job and he got a house and he got a car. You know, like you you need to take this. This is a unicorn. This is good. You know, and it's it, it was just problematic to me because I'm like, 
okay, you didn't say anything else. You said all basic stuff. You know, Some of that stuff wasn't basic though. I would say that's pretty unicorn. You know, you think having a car and having a job. You well, they said he makes six things. figures and he was waiting to have sex till marriage or something like that. That's that's the more unique <laughs> aspects of it. Then he or something like that. He was saving himself. That's more the unicorn thing. Okay, yeah, that part. Did it say that he has six figures or his friends have the other guys have six figures? Oh, but maybe I misread it. I don't yeah. remember. But I, I don't know. I just found it to be a little telling. Now, if the other guys don't want her, they don't want her. But to scold her for wanting a man that she was physically attracted to, you know, even though he had all these other qualities, I just thought that was really telling. I, and I, I, I just think it's a little problematic because, you know, women have to be attracted to who we are with as well. I don't think it's as important to us as it is for men. But we have to be attracted to, we're people, you know, we have to be attracted to the person we're with. And a lot of times it's not just about physical, you know, there are other things that come into play that make you feel attracted to someone, right? But you got to want to look at them and, and be around them, you know, <laughs> and, you know, I'm not married, so I can't say, but I hear a lot of married people talk about how sex is an important, not the most important, but in, an important part of the relationship. So if you're not attracted to the person, I foresee that being a problem. And I love what Darren and um, Rashad pointed out about, you know, I don't understand a man who wouldn't want a woman to be attracted to him. You know, part of me thinks that guys who have that perspective are probably deemed not as attractive. Um, and maybe that is where this idea is even coming from so, but um yeah i just thought you know and i like this christian minister he's cool you know but i just found it to be quite you know a little problematic that he used that example to say to black women oh well they got all these other things a car a house and this how dare you ask somebody to be physically attractive too you know <laughs> is that not how you guys took it I, 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 you go go I, what I was going to say was it, this this projection of what humility should be. Because, you know, I'm pretty sure somebody went in on those comments about how she needs to stay humble or get humble. And this man got X, Y, and Z. Projecting what she should value. Projecting what humility should mean to her when it comes to dealing with men. And it's just like she got a preference. This guy's not her preference. Why can't we just simply move on? And sometimes I feel like because she is sister, and like you said, and 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 let me tell y'all something, because my my auntie and them might be watching because they know I love the Lord. <laughs> but one of the things <laughs> we got to stop doing is projecting this 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 huge definition of humility onto each other, especially in the black community. It's not that the girl not humble. It's not that she may have not been grateful for the opportunity to meet somebody new. Why can't we just keep it simple? She was not attracted to the guy. She's not asking for, she, she's, she's not, and I'm trying to get my words together. She, it's not like she wasn't appreciative or she just dogged the guy out. She simply was not attracted to the guy. But we always got to come back. Well, what's yeah. wrong with him? And she it's didn't like, say look. he had to be. Go ahead, go ahead, Ashley. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying, it's not like she said he had to be drop dead gorgeous, right? She just wanted, you know, a guy that she was physically attracted to. So, right. yeah, I agree. I think we can nullify all of this if we take what Darwin said earlier and go get your own man because. <laughs> I'm the queen. Look, let me tell you, my husband just touched his shoulder lightly. Ugh. Go get him. He was over there turning to putty, okay? You take the first step. You don't have to be off super aggressive. You don't have to be masculine or whatever they call it. A wink, a smile. It's not that hard. Good Lord. I mean, giggle. She, she would have nullified this if she would have picked the man she wanted. They could have had that private conversation behind closed doors instead of doing this middleman stuff. Man. No, go get your man. Don't sit up here and wait. Don't be aggressive, but touch the back of his yeah. hand. It's not that deep. Good Lord. It's, it's, it's not. Yeah. 
It's not. I love it. And and you know what? He he dude is a unicorn. Just not to her. You know. And um I do agree with the so a part of the um, what he said, it is levels to this. And I think everybody has levels, right? And they do level checks when they when they try to date. They have a list of what they want. You know, my list is looks, personality, family, financial stability, right? Um looks to me is very high. It's the first thing I look at, right? Um, because I'm not about to wake up to an ugly person every day for the rest of my life. It's just not about to happen. Because I you know, they have to go. And then um so it's levels to it and then, you know, personality, family and financial ability. I think you can be attracted to those things and and it's like it's just like the um the SATs and your GPA, right? If you get if you got high SAT score, your GPA don't have to be so high. If you got high GPA, your your SATs don't have to be so high, right? So if a woman <laughs> is an average looking woman but she she has a great personality she's great with my family her family is great and she has a little money i might i i might i might get slide with that right you know what i'm saying but if she's horrible looking you know and then she's okay personality you know her family be talking crazy to me and you know she she making six dollars an hour i'm not dealing with it it's just too many red flags right so it is levels to this. And I think what he was trying to say, I think he was a little bit more harsh with it. He was just trying to say, like, dang, in his mind, he checks off all of your, everything on your list except for looks. Just let it go. But, you know, you can't tell somebody what's, a, um, like you said, what, what's, what's big on that list, right? So he, he's just definitely trying to tell her to settle. He, she, he definitely tell him to settle. Settle with this guy because guess what? He get he got he he makes six figures. He has a nice car. He has a nice home, which is basic things. You're grown. You are supposed to have those things, you know. I don't know about the six figures, but you're supposed to have um a house, a home, and stuff like that. But most most women don't really care about all that because most women now they get their own money. So all that six figure stuff don't really mean nothing to a woman. Uh, women got their own car, so who cares? You know, she not on the bus, you know, and, and they got their own home. So um. And I don't know no woman who who, who wants a, a a man that's not experienced in bed. So all that waiting the marriage stuff is kind of crazy to me. Don't nobody want to be waiting all this time and then giving somebody they don't know how to work. Yeah, hey, I was thinking the same thing. That ain't doing them no favors. And exactly. <laughs> exactly. A, I think a woman gonna want a man to know how to work it. You know, what I'm saying? a man a man usually wants a woman who they can show and teach things to. But don't no woman want to do who just, you know, lack of experience in hand. So all that stuff that's on the do list, she ain't, she ain't looking for all that. You know, go find her. If you want to help out, go find her a nice looking tall guy. If you can't do that, then, hey, keep, keep it, you know. But don't shame her. Okay. All right. I like that. Um, I, I think a takeaway for that would be to not care about what other people think you should want. Um, of course, be reasonable, though, right? Be reasonable. But it's okay to want somebody that you're attracted to. And for ladies, you know, broaden, you know, you got to, you know, not just be available, but be okay with approaching who you like, you know, or maybe, you know, approaching, however you want to say it, letting it be known, expressing interest and a man. That makes perfect sense to me. And then I love the numbers that you use, you know, out of those 10 guys that approach you, that you're waiting to initiate something with you, only two of them might, you know, pan out um, or be an option. But if you actually go and try to initiate conversation, it doesn't have to always be like you asking somebody out on a date, you know, like I've done this several times. Um, just go and talk to somebody, you know, and be personable and be Ash, friendly. Sorry, I, just as the, men, men are so. If a woman just says hi, we own it. We own it. Oh, oh, she said say hi. She want me. I, you know, that's how. I mean. So it don't even take a lot. You know, a, a woman ain't gotta really come up. Hey, what's up, baby? You looking good? They ain't gotta spit no game. All they gotta do is like stare, stare a little bit too long. A dude go be with his friend like, oh, you see Shorty looking at me. Man, I can I can get that. You know, that's how I go down. So we simple creatures. You know Shoot. what I'm saying? Harder picture on Facebook. Oh, that she wants us. She wanted. Exactly. <laughs> you like my picture? Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Well, everybody, I had a really, really good time tonight, minus my technical difficulties. I think we had some good good discussion um, that needs to be revisited <laughs> um, and maybe fine-tuned a little bit. Um, I asked some very broad questions um, about the Black manosphere, but I think that we could talk hours and, you know, you know, have some really great discussions and go off into different directions when it comes to that. Um, and so I definitely think it's worth a revisit. And um, I am actually going to cut the show a little short today, y'all. But it's all right, y'all. Bear with us. This is show number six, okay? We are um, growing more and more every day, every week. And I appreciate Darwin. I appreciate Rashad. Hopefully, y'all can come back next week. I got you. Uh, that that was like a question, y'all. <laughs> I got you. I'm just playing. But yes. anybody want to um, wrap us up and say any last words? Yes, I really love the, the the last topic we talked about. We need to keep talking about it because. Um, it's especially I, I love what Darwin said about brothers are very simple. They are. I'm, I'm married because of simplicity. It was not complex. It was not this long, drawn out. You know, all, all I did was look a little longer and that was it. So, so <laughs> I would love for us to keep talking about physical attraction and, and teaching black people how to date, because I think we, we, we know how to have sex with each other. We know how to live with each other. Some of us, we think we dating and we, we ain't dating. Y'all just smashing people and we need to know how to date. So I, I really enjoyed the last topic and I enjoy having the gentleman on. Darwin reminds me of um, some of the guys I grew up with in, in, in rural Georgia, simple guys. I'm ready for y'all to come back on. So welcome. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to everybody out there. Pen Rights, Mental, um, um, Rilla, Stefan. Thank you. Cage Rebel. Thank you all so much for joining us. Peace out until next Tuesday, 7, 7 o'clock. Thank Bye -bye. you. Good night. <laughs> Later, y'all. See you.